Hi guys, I'm at the Gilson factory and I was dying to understand why a snowboard starts out. These are, those are weird snowboards. <laughs> why snowboards are square before they're the shape of a snowboard. And so Nick, the owner of Gilson, is gonna walk us through the process of making a snowboard not square. Let's do it. So if this is, when we, when we make a snowboard core, let's do, We'll do the core in black and the other layers in black and then we'll do the fiberglass in blue. So let's say we're building a flat base board. Your core is actually going to be cut to shape first. And so we saw that in the wood shop room where it looks like the standard snowboard shape. When we sublimate the base, we then do the exact same thing. And so the base is fully cut out, edges are bent and tacked to it um, and ready for layup. So the base of the snowboard with the steel edges plus the wood core are both in their final finished shape, right? And you can see here, this is the end of the board and this is where the hydrophobic black perimeter of sidewalls is, right? And actually it starts like this. Um, and so this is a flat snowboard core in the cross section. You can imagine that what it actually looks like here is something like that, right? Yeah. So the base then also is a uh, is a piece of material that's cut into the final snowboard shape in that snowboard shape. The edges are then on the base like this on either side. We saw those get in, put on in the edge room and those teeth are now there to bond to the fiberglass. Now during layup, you that fiberglass is being wetted out, right? If that fiberglass were cut to the exact shape of the finished snowboard, it would be nearly impossible to get it to line up with that perimeter. And if it shifted either way, then you'd end up with the fiberglass say starting here, right? And like maybe it goes here and then it's hanging off a little bit on, on this side uh, and then you end up with your edge here not having fiberglass going edge to edge, which means that this is gonna be a place that's really, you know, it's gonna, yeah, it's it's gonna, gonna be weak, it's gonna, yeah, it's not gonna hang up. And then you're gonna get moisture into your wood core, freeze thaw cycle, split the layers apart. So what we do is we lay the fiberglass in as a rectangular layer here that goes out beyond either side. And then we put a layer of fiberglass on either side of the wood core and it overhangs around the board perimeter, even though that base and the wood core are the exact right shape. And then on the very top, we lay the top sheet on and same thing is that if that top sheet were cut to the final shape of the snowboard, then any shifting of it, you'd end up with your artwork off-centered or not going side to side, protecting the full board. And you know, you'd see like the end of your top sheet and then your wood core continue yeah. this way. So we lay down the top sheet as a full rectangle as well with the, you know, it's like a standard bleed in, in artwork terms. And then we sandwich all these layers together with the base as the shape of a snowboard, the wood core is the shape of the finished snowboard, but the fiberglass layers and the top sheet overhanging in a rectangular shape. And then in the Last room, right here, we use a saw blade, uh, where, which you just saw, where the, the board is cut out of that full rectangular shape. And we actually run that blade right along the steel. We use the steel edge as a guide, believe it or not. So as the guide for cutout. And so when you look at what's actually getting cut off, you're cutting off the excess fiberglass here, here, and the excess top sheet. And you're actually cutting off a sliver of the sidewall as well. Yeah, so my question is, how do we know what angle do we want to do that cut at? Awesome, so the bandsaw cuts it straight up 90 degrees. So this starts as the finished snowboard will start as a 90 degree angle and here's the sidewall here, right? You've now cut off a little piece of sidewall over here and you've cut off this layer of the top sheet, this layer of the glass and glass and now your steel edge is right here. That's your steel edge, and now here's your base layer of PTEX. Mm -hmm. And so that, that steel edge is actually, <laughs> flush. that steel edge is totally flush from that bandsaw blade, okay? And so what we then do next is we run it through a machine that we call the shaper, and that shaper has a bit on it that looks, it's like a circular trapezoid like this. And then on the sides here, these are actually, these are knives that spin at like 17,000 RPMs. And, and then as you, as you run the board over it, and we'll take a look at that machine, um, this blade comes and, and cuts off your sidewall. The sidewall at the exact angle that Which, you want. That you want. Yep. And then when we put it into that Jupiter finishing machine, it'll run grinding wheels along the top and the bottom and the sides to get it like totally dialed into two thousandths of an inch. See. 
Where I got really confused with this step is I didn't know this machine existed. And that's why I thought you had to be so skilled with this bandsaw and hold it yeah. at, at a certain angle. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I've like literally Louise was just giving was just giving me a hard time. She's like, "You gonna cut out uh, Jonathan's board?" I was like, "Oh yeah, you know it." And she's like, "Last time I cut out a snowboard, I got I got fired from this job very quickly <laughs> because last time I did it was a ceramic jigsaw, like tracing it with a hand. Uh -huh. Now, you know, now the bandsaw is like as tall as this room, and it's this giant blade that spins, and it makes it." Um, it, it keeps it cool because it's such a huge blade and it's always spinning in one direction and so it doesn't get hot because believe it or not when you're cutting out the perimeter shape of a board they're running that blade along the edge to basically trace it so the friction. But, but yeah but because of the curvature of the board they've got to do it upside down so they're cutting it blind so they're, they're you, you, <laughs> yeah, as you know and as you just saw they're literally cutting out the shape of this based on sound and feel so it's like and they'll like dial the pitch in exactly right And they'll know, obviously, if you're cutting outside of it, then you're going to end up with a wavy line in your board and the excess material won't have been cut off correctly. And if you cut into your metal, you're obviously sawing a fully finished perfect snowboard in half, which is really That's not sad. good. Yeah, and so That's, they do it all based on sound and feel. Is it one of the most skilled positions no question. in the, the no building question. of a snowboard? Yeah, it's a really skilled position. You also have a full face mask and respirator on because you're working with fully cured fiberglass and you're cut in. And so, and so, you know, it's just like being able to see the shape that you're cutting is impossible. So you're doing it on sound and feel. You're doing it with obstructed vision, of course. And uh, yeah, really super skilled labor. Well, dude, um, thanks for breaking that down yeah, for of me. Course, man. I, I just had so many questions about that and I know there's probably someone that's just like me that had those questions. So I was like, when I go to Gilson, I'm making this a video. I want, yeah. I want to know, <laughs> why don't we just make the snow? It all, it all makes sense now though, but dude, yeah. thanks for breaking that down with your rad little drawing. Makes yeah, total sense to me now. And uh, <laughs> I hope it makes sense to you guys. Subscribe, check out Gilson. There's stuff in the description and I'll uh, we'll see you tomorrow because it's daily on this channel. We do stuff like this. Damn.